going to see some intuition and some misconceptions about the centripetal force with misconceptions I mean more like uh, thinking in the formal sense and not the colloquial sense so in the centripetal force we we have a a cycle as a path so we have a object could be a car or whatever or could be um, a ball a ball with a string and we are turning it around so this would be the uh, string here is our ball and this taking this circular path now here the point is that we have one would be the the normal velocity and uh, in another video we will talk about the formulas and there is other thing that is called the angular um, velocity angular velocity now the velocity of this for example at this point at this point let's say that the this is going on this direction um, so here is going in this direction then when I put it here goes in this direction here goes on this direction so um, if I'm talking about here this um, object has a velocity on this direction that is let me call it v sub x also we have some velocity on v sub y and some velocity in v sub c now uh, we are talking this or for example in a car when we're doing the turn on a car um we are in just uh, 2d so we are just talking about in x y because c would be the you know the the component and so if here i have the the turn here the car the c component would be on this direction so we are not talking about that because it doesn't have uh, sense so we just are talking about more like in x and y directions so the point is that we say that we have a acceleration in the turn because the velocity the magnitude magnitude of the velocity of the of the angular velocity would be the same we say the magnitude is the same but not the direction and because the acceleration acceleration is change in velocity over change in time uh, this change in velocity means change either in direction or in in magnitude this is the colloquial form but why is this so because what happens if we just change the the um, uh, direction and not the magnitude here let's say this goes to 100 meters per second this is the velocity on this x if we change the direction like here passes from here to here as you can see now the particle is the you know now this is the component of the this is the the new velocity and as you can see we have a component on the on this x direction that is this component and a small component on the y direction so this is v sub y and this is v sub x so now the this particle have instead of having a v sub y initial of zero now has a v sub y of yeah, I don't know, let's say two meters per second or, what, or negative two if you can think it, whatever it is meters per second and he instead of having 100 meters per second now has I don't know whatever we need to do Pythagorean theorem or whatever it is so the issue is that because we change the direction the magnitude of the velocity of the the magnitude of the component on, of x of the velocity change 
and so it did not start the say acceleration either if we change the magnitude or the direction of the velocity it is if we change the direction of the velocity we are changing the magnitude of the velocity we are changing um, the the magnitude of the velocity on the x component the magnitude of the velocity on the y component even though the resultant velocity be the same for example the angular velocity is the same the magnitude of the overall velocity here could be the same but not the direction and the um, these changes in direction are those that produces the changes on the magnitude of the component because the overall velocity is the same but the component of the velocity the component in x the component in y of the velocity are always changing in magnitude as we change the the direction so this is the first um, point that we need to get clear that the there is a acceleration because there is a change in direction of the velocity but a change in direction means a change in magnitude of the component in x component in y of the velocity that's one point now the other point is um, now we can think as we can take as when the object is here we can say that this is the x direction when the object is here for do it easy we can now say that this is now our x direction all right so when the object is here it tends to be on this line this is newton's first law when it is here it tends it tends to go in this straight line by newton's first law why this does not happen because there is a force newton's first law that impedes uh, that the object continue to go in this straight line now what is this force this force if we are talking um for example on the in this example of the bowl and the string this we are turning it around so um this turning it around is we are exerting a force or the string is exerting a force so th this is the force of the string the one that is generating a acceleration so because we have a force we have the acceleration and it's this force that makes the 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 change on the direction by newton's first law now in gravity for example um, here we have the earth and here we have the moon the moon is in circular motion around the earth why does this why is this so because the the force of gravity is pulling the moon is pulling it and so we have this is pulling it here when it goes here this is pulling it here here it's pulling it here so we have a circular motion but in a in in everyday life that so we see the cars on the on a turn why if we have um let's say this is the the car i drove here we have a car whatever it be um and here we have a it turns something like this. So what is making that the car be taking this circular path? If there is no um, gravity force that is exert that is um, going here because the gravity would be you know in the C direction. Um, there is no string that is pulling the car towards the center. So what is this uh, force that is generating the centripetal acceleration? This force is the force of friction. Friction on the 
and the tight here the issue is that we have the um, the whale or I don't know if it's called like that one you know the thing we, in which we turn around this thing that we control with the hands um, when we do the turn we are exerting a force on the whales so we are exerting that we are like you know this is like the, the weight that is going from this direction we put a force that that like push it to the side and so this continue like this we continue to do the turning around with the with the um this wheel like this turn it around and so on the on the wheels the friction goes well the, we um there's a force that push it so that change the di direction of the of the tide and this changes on uh, direction of the tide uh you know has to do with the the friction of the tides with the ground if there were no friction there would be no uh, force that we exert so if we put oil or even water the car could go around without giving the turn certainly we need a lot of water not just the raining that usually happens but so there would be no friction and so the there would be no force that, exer that we exerted on the ties that make that the car does the turn and so if we put oil just the car would continue on the straight line so this is the other interesting fact uh, that the centripetal acceleration that we see in everyday life in the cars is due to the friction force now um uh other other things that you can see it is uh, have you seen that in like a butterfly or something like that that sometimes uh, comes into the the house and if we put a if we have a, a light bulb here a light bulb let's see here the this butterfly will do turns around the this bulb this light bulb so it will be like this this is because um for some reason the these um animals or these insects these butterfly usually follows the the sun so it, when it is outside it gets close to the sun but whatever close it it is so here we have the sun and here we have the this butterfly this butterfly can come close but this distance is completely anything compared with the distance from the sun and this butterfly or the air is exactly the same so whatever movement that this uh, butterfly does it has no no meaning no change in velocity no change in anything but when we have a light bulb this butterfly acts as if the light bulb be the, the source of the light as the sun so we have here the butterfly and so the the butterfly comes here and here the distance between the butterfly and the light bulb is is significant um and there is change if the if the butterfly goes now um the butterfly is here and now goes here the the distance increases and here increases to a significant um number as opposed to when we have just the sun so the issue here is that that the the butterfly is coming here when it is coming here um you know here is close but it will have a a circular motion because whatever movement the the butterfly does for example it's coming from here it is getting closer and closer and closer 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 and here then it is coming further away so this the, the butterfly turns and here and all right it's getting closer closer and then turns and then again getting closer closer and it needs to be turning around and around so also here there is a uh, centripetal acceleration and the the last issue 
is that of the from the trains trains or cars or whatever it be we have a a um, let's say the the train road that is having this turn um how and could it be you know because this is a cycle with less radius with a smaller radius than the one that is being generated here so we have the train that has one side here and another here this is the train so it is going here like this and then we do this turn but what's going on because the ties are the same size and everything but this one is advancing more distance in the same amount of time as this is advancing less distance so the velocity the velocity is different for this way is different than for this way because this advances more distance than this one than this one certainly in the same time um but the angular velocity angular velocity this means for example how many revolutions revolutions per second is the same now that means that in in let's say that this goes from here to here that, let's say that the angular frequency is one one hertz so one revolution per second this means that this way um do a turn in one second and this also do one turn in one second but remember that this way in that same period of time at advances a, a larger distance and e and so even though the angular velocity for both of the of the ties are the same the velocity is this different the distance um, traveled is different but how could be this possible if the angular um, frequency is the same so how could we do that we have two wires two tires that in one second they both do a turn and this happens more than this one how could that be this is because the the tire is it's not just a cycle like it's not just a cycle like this it's actually a um, donut if you want it's something like this so um if you see it when when we get at the at the steaming the for example this let's say here we have a side that has this the sides are like this like this so this one when it's giving the tone does it with this smaller um, part and when this does does the tone do it with this bigger part so they both have the same angular frequency they both do a a turn in one second but this turn is smaller than this turn and so for that this um, tire ad advances more travels more um, than this one because the the radius of each one is different and so even though the angular frequency is the same the velocity would be different and in next videos we will see now the derivation of the formula etc but it was just a video for intuition